In this video, I'm going to show you how you can measure milliohms with a standard multimeter with a resolution of down to one ten thousandth of an ohm. This can come in handy when measuring transformer windings, relay contacts, switches, wiring, and any type of sub-ohm reading that a standard multimeter's resistance function is unable to discern. And the way that we're going to do that is by using a multimeter and setting it on voltage, and we're going to use a very simple concept called Ohm's Law. So if we set this on voltage. First of all, I'm going to measure the milliohm resistance of a couple of things here. One is this 0.39 ohm resistor here. The other one is this relay, the contacts of this relay. This is an old relay, and maybe I'll even do this new relay here, but I will need to be able to energize these coils to do that. I'm also going to measure the resistance of this jumper wire. It's going to be a lot higher than what you would expect. And I'm going to measure the resistance of the primary side of this microwave oven transformer. Because if this is shorted, it's going to blow the fuse or trip the breaker of the microwave oven. So let's start off with the resistor. This is a 0.39 ohm resistor. Now, if I have this on just standard ohms. This is the reason why that we're doing this. And by the way, to do this, to measure in milliohms, we're going to be using this power supply and we're going to inject, we're going to pass an exact known current through the load. And it's going to be in this case one amp. You could use 100 milliamps if you want to, but you have to multiply by 10. But we'll uh, set it on one amp, so this power supply is going to maintain one amp of current through the load. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and just see if we can measure this resistance. This is a 0.39 ohm resistor, so it's going to be around 0.4 ohms. But with a standard multimeter, what I'm getting is I'm getting 0.5 ohms. And that's because we have lead resistance here. So if you really wanted to measure down to the milliohm, the resistance of something, you can't just use it with a standard, standard multimeter. You know, it's going to have lead resistance. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put this on voltage. And I'm going to hook these clip leads up. And we're going to measure the voltage that we have set here. Now, you don't have to use a fancy power supply. You could use this one here, but this isn't quite as accurate. These are ultra cheap. This is the one I recommend. It's really great for lots of things. And so what we're doing is we're creating a constant current source. And by the way, on another video, I'm going to build a constant current source so that you could use it portably in the field if you wanted to. But right now, so we have these leads here connected to the multimeter. You can see it's showing three volts. Now, it can't supply one amp because of the high input impedance 10 mega ohm of this meter here. However, we can go ahead and pass one amp through this resistor. We're going to measure the actual voltage across this resistor, and it's... 0 0.409 volts. Maybe we'll just set it for millivolts for this demonstration. So I've got 410 millivolts, which means that this is 410 milliohms, or exactly 0 0.410 ohms. So that's that resistor. And let's, this jumper wire here is used for breadboarding. Now let's measure what the resistance, it should be zero ohms. I mean, you would expect it to be zero ohms. You would want it to be zero ohms. But the, the actual resistance of this jumper wire is 171 milliohms. So it's got a significant amount of resistance there. Now for this microwave oven transformer, now you have to be careful with these because even if you're putting a few volts on an inductive load, when you the moment that you energize it, you're going to get, particularly with the ratio here, I would suggest not even doing this, this is for demonstration purposes only, you're going to get a lot of voltage on the output of this transformer here. In fact, my suggestion is never mess around with microwave oven transformers, they're very dangerous. But for this demonstration, if I wanted to test the resistance of this winding here, it should be about a half of an ohm, but if this microwave oven transformer winding was shorted, then it would be close to zero ohms and that would trip a breaker or blow a fuse. I'll go ahead and measure it. We have, it's about 400 milliohms. So that's a good microwave oven primary side. It's about a half, 400 milliohms. If I were to just hook up, if I just wanted to test using this multimeter, I might think, well, it's supposed to have a very low ohms anyway. 
Now I'm gonna get this. I don't even know if that's a shorted winding or not. That's why I wanna measure milliamps. It'll tell me the true story. Now for this relay here, the contacts of a relay should be somewhere, somewhere between five milliohms to maybe 15. If much higher than that, then it's gonna be dissipating a lot of heat if you have a lot of current going through it. But for this, I'm gonna to have to actually energize this coil here. Okay, so I have a, another power supply that's energizing this relay. This is a special case where if, you're, if you're actually wanting to check the contacts of a relay. So I've got this set up and we've got our three volts on the multimeter. This particular relay has its contacts broken out to the uh, top of it through these connectors. And I'm getting 17 milliohms of resistance. So this is an older relay. 17 is not that great of a reading because that means that when this relay is energized, uh, those contacts, if this has a lot of current going through them, is go those contacts are gonna dissipate a lot, a lot more heat than say on a new relay. This is a new relay. Let's go ahead and hook this up. All right, let's go ahead and test the resistance of this. This one, I'll put it on millivolts. It's gonna be a lot easier to read since we're talking about really low milliohms here. I'm measuring 3.8 milliohms. So that is a really low reading. This is a good relay and those contacts were going to, going to pass that current through with very, very little to no power dissipation. If you have smaller loads like this little resistor here, it's just only a quarter watt resistor. You're gonna to wanna to push this down to say 100 milliamps here. And that way it won't dissipate as much power. You wanna put an amp through this. 100 milliamps is fine. You're just gonna do a quick reading on it. Now, since we're, going, since we're using 100 milliamps and your voltage is I times R, you're gonna get a reading that is 10 times lower than what you would expect if you're using one amp. So you need to multiply that reading by 10. So if I wanna measure this one ohm resistor here, it's gonna give me 100 milliohms. I multiply that by 10, I got 1,000 milliohms, that's one ohm. So you can even measure very small devices that are unable to dissipate the amount of wattage that you would get with one amp by dropping it down to 100 milliohms. You can even go down to 10 milliamps, but you have to multiply by 100. So anyway, that's how you measure milliohms. I hope this video has been helpful and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.